Good afternoon, everybody. My condolences to the Blake family. Could we stand, please, as we do the reception of the body? <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I am the resurrection and the life, say the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, my eye shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, it is certain we carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. So we're about to sing the first hymn, which is Blessed Assurance. I warn you, I'm not a good singer, so you all will not be laughing at me this afternoon. You all be singing along with me. Fair enough? Well, let's go. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a... <coughs> Hells of salvation. Purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. Prison, prison, my Savior. All the song prison prison my savior all the day long perfect submission perfect submission perfect delight visions of rapture visions of rapture now burst on my sight angels angels descending 
Bring from above echoes of mercy, echoes of mercy. Whispers of love, this is my story. Prison, prison, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, prison, prison, my Savior, all the day long. Let us repeat the Apostles' Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to hell the third day, rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven to the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. You all will just hum the hymn for me, because it's not a hymn on here, but I just need to severe the coffin. Fair enough? So you all will hum. O oh God, our help, in ages past, our hope for years to come, the shelter from the to come, our hope for years to come, be thou our 
our God while trouble lasts. Be thou, O God, while trouble lasts, while trouble lasts, and our eternal home and oh, eternal home. Amen. Blessed and eternal Father, thou great sovereign King, you send for thy only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem of this well. At this holy and dedicated our Lord, I, thy servant and priest, bring before thee, Rona Blake. I ask, eternal Father, if this child of yours had cried to thee at her last hour, seeking forgiveness, mercy, and compassion. Would thou, great compassionate King, I beg of thee, wipe away her slate, O Lord, and grant her forgiveness. Grant, O Lord, the garments of white that she may make her ascension unto thee. Send forth, O Lord, thy holy angels to protect her. Send forth also thy Holy Spirit and thy angels that they may watch over the family who now mourn her passing. She afford the fight, O Lord. And now this race is finished, O Lord. Grant her peace with thee that she may enter in the gates of paradise to sit with the company of saints for the great resurrection morn. But we who are here, O Lord, let us be reminded that death one day will come to us all, and thus we must make our calling and our election sure with thee. This we pray unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So at this point in time, beloved, the eulogy will be read by Kerry. Blake. Good afternoon, everybody gathered. All family members, friends, well wishers. We can come today to. We come today to pay tribute to Mrs. Rona Blake. Right? Rona James Blake, born the 27th of December, 1931. Was a daughter of Andrine Nelson, deceased, and widow of Errol Blake, also deceased. She was the only child, she was the only child for a period, sorry, she was the only child for a period of time. So she was the only child for a period of time before, before the, arri the arrival of her sister, Martina, and later, and later on, her brother, Louis. She attended St. Agnes Anglican's Primary School, a school in which she in which she enrolled her um, five of her children. She went on to mother nine children and was the grandmother of nine and great grandmother of five. All of whom she adored, loved and cared for. Thank you, mom. Thank you, granny. Well, of course, I will say thank you, great grand, for the younger ones who can't speak for, for themselves right now. In spite of the tough times, in early days, she made magic with, the, with what little resources she had, ensuring that, the ch that her children were well fed and had necessary school supplies. Selflessness was a strong characteristic 
character trait, sorry, as she left herself undone in many, in many ways. That is true. This too. Hmm. Discipline, <laughs> discipline was in her bio. Operating with, come on, unscrew. Discipline was in her bio. Operating with, with a no nonsense approach. Yes. Operating with a no, no nonsense approach. She sought to instill, to instill the right morals in her children. She didn't spare the rod. You all know that, huh? But as it but as in the case of, as in the case with most grandmothers, there was a softer side when it came to her grand and great grandchildren. Anyone who knows her, knows her mouth. She didn't hold back on what she had to say, whether you liked it or not. In spite of that, she was the most loving, caring, and fun mother anyone could have known. She had a beautiful voice. Boy, could she sing. This voice echoed throughout the home as she did her chores. And she would always stop and lament, I wish at least one of my children could sing. I make so many children and none of them could sing. And we all used to laugh. The appreciation of her voice extended to her church, where oftentimes she would be called up to lead the choir whenever they need a rose. Another favorite skill of hers was cooking. She had a sweet hand and could bake one of the best, one of the best black cakes around. Sharing was a big thing with her. And she believed in cooking cooking extra and was, and was ready to share with anyone who happened to pass by. On her fun side, she had a hearty laugh. When you heard it, it made you laugh. It really made you laugh. She loved dancing and could hold her own on the dance floor when attending any function. Cell Duncan was one of her favorite functions to attend. She made sure that she was appropri appropriately dressed for the occasion, something she tried to instill in all her children. She was a mother of mothers. She had a sympathetic air and was always willing to listen and assist someone in distress. Many benefited from this treat as she assisted many. Possessing a green thumb, Almost anything she planted would, would bear fruit. And she had... She had some of the most beautiful, most beautiful and healthy plants around. Orchids were her favorite flowers. And there were many in her garden that she patiently cared for. She was a proud woman. And this was evident even, even in the later years of her life. When we realized there, there were something, some challenges with her, with her walking, we bought her a walking stick, a walking cane, I should say. She just gave, she just, she just gave us a look 
That facial expression said it all. Of course, it was never used. Instead, she chose to, to use a large umbrella, insisting that it served two purposes. Finally, her love for animals was seen in the way she cared for her dogs. To her, they were like part of the family, and she would speak to them as though she was speaking to her children. And as she said, they kept her company when she alone was home. She would be truly missed. Her guidance, her warmth, her kindness, her sweet smile and laughter. We appreciate it all. Thank you. Sleep in peace, dear mother. Sleep in peace, dear grand. Thank you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, try and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. There's a land that is fairer than thee, and by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over we to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet. By and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, beautiful shore, in the sweet, in the sweet. By and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the bliss And our spirit shall sorrow no more Not a sign for the blessing of rest In the sweet, in the sweet, in the sweet By and by, oh by and by We shall meet on that beautiful in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To a bountiful Father above, we will offer our tributes of praise for the glorious gifts of His love. And the blessings that hallow all days in the sweet, in the sweet, in the sweet, oh, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore, beautiful shore, in the sweet, in the sweet, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. Beautiful show. Reading from the book of Psalms, the first reading will be taken from Psalm 39. If a family member wishes to read the psalm for me, I would make way for you guys to come. Anyone wishing to read it for me? All right, I'll do the reading then. I said I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with the bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence, I held my peace even from good, and my sorrows were stirred. My heart was hot within me, and while I was musing the fire burnt, then spake I with my tongue. Lord, make me to know my end, and the measures of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a handbreadth, and my age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Salah. Surely every man walketh in a vein, sure, surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? 
my hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions, make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb, I opened not my mouth, because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me, I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes, thou correctest man for iniquity. Thou makest his beauty be consumed away like a moat. Surely every man is vanity, Salah. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner, as all my fathers were. O spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Thus ended the first reading. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Again, reading from the book of Psalms, the second reading will be taken from Psalm 90, stopping at verse 11. Here it's started. Sorry, verse 12. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth to ever, thou hast formed the earth and the well. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday, when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carries them away as with a flood, they as a sleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, in the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins, in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spent our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three scores and ten, and if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is your strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Resting at the twelfth verse, glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Reading from the book of Proverbs, the 31st chapter, from verses 1 to, to 20. Here it's starting. Verses 9, sorry. Verses 10 to 20. Here it's starting. Who can find a virtuous woman, for her price is above rubies? The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do, do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchants, she is like the merchant merchant ships, she bring forth her food from afar. She rises up she riseth also, yet as while yet is it in the night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and by it and with the fruit of her hands she planted the vineyard. She girdled, her, she girdled her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceived that her merchant is good, merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She laid her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the, distar, the distaff. She stretched out her hands to the poor, and she reached forth her hands to the needy, resting at the 20th verse, giving God the honor and praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> Let us all sing, How Great Thou Art. It didn't hear, oh yeah. Just now, just now. I see how great thou art here, but how great is our how great is our God. I really don't know these new hymns, you know, so you all will have to sing it for me. If not, we'll sing how great thou art. All of you realize I can't sing by now, right? 
So don't be laughing, sing along with me. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Fair enough, we should know that. How great thou art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Out the universe displayed and sings my soul. How great thou art! God, that God is son and spirit, send him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, that on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sins, then sings my soul. How great the art! How great the art! Then sings my soul. Then sings. How great the art! When Christ shall come, when Christ shall come, with shouts of acclamation, to take me home, what joy, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow, then I shall bow in humble, in humble adoration. And then proclaim, my God, my God, how great. Then sings my soul, then sings my soul. How great the what? How great the what? How great the what? Then sings my soul. How great the world! After hearing the eulogy, the, le the, the reading I brought, I think, should be the most appropriate. St. Agnes has a great history, very steep history. My father, who died at 80, how much? Seven, he went to St. Agnes. It is a school, but you know, St. James is different. And when I say St. James, I ain't talking about St. James, I'm talking about St. James, Cookerit, and environs. The only place we used to live out was Dundonald Hill and Bellevue. That was a different tribe. <laughs> Nothing against people living up there. But we all grew together as one. We knew nothing of, of straight here and that ahead. Everybody was uncle, aunt, brother, sister. We had a good time. I always tell people in St. James, when it's who say all are Muslim. Eat all are Muslims. That's all. For who say, if they go to check how much people turn in moon, plenty of them go get kicked out. Mark my words. Am I lying? 
Same thing with Christmas, all of we enjoying ourselves. Well, Carnival, we know that is Bacchanal for the whole country. Diwali, we are all there. Why? We all grew in this oneness. She came from this. She spread this love. She ensured that her kids were taken care of, did all that she had to do as a mother, as a woman. She was strong the way you all talk about her. The first time I met her is when she was going down. And my coworker, David, he said to me, he said, um, you come and do some prayers for my mother. I said, sure. I keep saying I come and I come in. I really did go eventually. And I saw her. She was good. We did a small prayer. I was to go back. I didn't get a chance to. I always, I'd be too busy for myself. Nevertheless, she was there. And I openly con compliment him for his tenacity in which he held this together. The times people come and this morning people say, David's mother was sick. People didn't work, you know, they didn't know because he never complained. He came and he did what he had to do. Going home, he said, boy, I had to go home and see about her. And when she started to get back down, you know, it was a, you know, but nevertheless, all I say to you, the family, the Blake family is, she didn't suffer. That, you see, cancer is one thing. And lying in a bed is another thing. That's okay. That's a good debt. That's an honorable debt. You know why? You still have your senses. But when she started to get done with that, I, every, ever so often I would ask him, I said, how is mommy feeling? He said, boy, well, you know, she's getting like this. I said, David, eventually you may not be able to handle it. But God heard. God says, Rona, come home now. And she was an active person doing all that she had to do. She was independent. So that would give her her stubbornness. And sometimes we need women to be like that in this day and age. Stubborn, when I say stubborn in the good sense. Being able to stand up to their responsibilities. We men, I could just imagine. Anybody have marks on the skin from the legs all they get? All they still have it? If you have it, in, if you have it on your hand, you have it in your mind, sure. But it showed the love and what she did at the end of the day. But you and I are left behind. We are coming. And I want to believe in my heart she made peace with God. I did pray. I do the prayers for her. And I asked God that, you know, when David called and he says, you know, well, my mother is gone. I was close to my chapel, my personal chapel. I just went in and I offered. And I said to God, I said, Lord, I beg of thee. Wipe away her sins, both consciously and unconsciously, Lord. Grant her that peace. And surround her with your angels, O Lord, and protect her until she makes her climb unto thee. Why? Just this morning, you know, something happened and a, someone called me for comfort, for advice. And I told them, listen, don't hate, but pray. Make it hard not to hate. I could slap them and I could get away with it. I say, it doesn't make sense. I say, for hell was not created for us. It is we by choice choose hell. We were chosen by God to be with our Father. But we, by nature, we enjoy this life which is an illusion. And I'm certain your mommy didn't have it easy. Living in those days, if you, well, you all come into that era, it only had two classes of people, you know. Remember that? Either you're rich or you're poor. We didn't have to go, we couldn't go, we could go by Elsa's and buy two small toys soon, that's all. Bicycling was all the question, we mounted in a bicycle. Trolley, in the road. We foot, two-tone, because white man, right through. You all remember those days. It's only in the 70s when the oil price rise and we were into it. The middle class entered. Now I don't know what's happening, like they're trying to stifle the middle class back again. But we enjoy those days, you know what? Those days made us good. She came from an era before those days, stepping in into those days, having her kids with her, grooming you guys to be what? Strong. Strong in the sense, I tell people this, eh? You might be weak in body, but if you have a strong mind, you're real strong. I know a friend of mine, lived in St. James, very talented fellow. If you all know St. James, good, you all must, all must hear about him, Rulo Bar. You know Rulo Bar, right? Very talented fellow, went to Trinity as all. But you know what he's weak in? It's mine. Rulo Bar wanted to go a party at night. The night was a party, we ran down by 
The fellow neck on Monoam Street there, Nanan, say, hey, take this pants, turn it over, and sew it up. See, the fellow say, you're mad? He says, sew the pants back to front for me, inside out. We went part, you know, after years after, you know, two tone come out. We would go somewhere and Rollo would see old wood and everybody laugh at it. He'd go on the beach and see the wood and when he comes home, somebody give him a job, he'd set up something. But you know what it was his? Weakness is mine. And if it's one thing you guys ought to take, and we who are here, the greatest strength lies in your mind. Once your mind is strong-willed, and strong-willed means you can listen to corrections and be in subjection but strong willing to know there is right and there is wrong. There are two words, yes or no, it's not in between them. She grew in that era and she fought and she grew you guys up in that era. She did well. She did well at the end of the day. Because you guys are now all grown. Everybody's alive, right? All the siblings, right? Right. So you all guys are there. She has done her part. Now, she's about to take her rest. I ask of you, every man's book is a life. Is every man's life is a book. There are some chapters you'll want to read over and over and over again. And there are some chapters you just skip me through once. And there are some chapters, if possible, and nobody looking, you tear it out of the book. Don't do it. But you keep, the, you keep that. Why? We are not perfect beings, and mistakes are there. And every man's life, rather than we find time to condemn, learn from it. She wasn't a perfect person, I agree. I sure she could have, she ever got in a fight, and then she never got in a fight. You never know what they're she got in a fight. Ooh boy, she was bad. <laughs> well, you know, listen. Adi, David, don't worry about you now. But at the end of the day, she was strong. And despite what, her time came. And you know what is our consolation? I don't want to stay too long. You know what is her consolation? The thief on the cross. You know that chap? Holy tradition says, when the Holy Family flee to Egypt while in the desert, himself and his friend, the other fellow on the other side of the cross, that was his friend, you know. The other fellow on the other side of the cross was a Jew, but he was a Syrian Jew, and this one was an Egyptian. They robbed the Holy Family twice, on the way in and on the way out. And what a privilege had that thief, robbing the, the God, the God man himself, and nailed to the cross up beside him, first mocking him and then realizing who he was, and said to him, Master, when thy kingdom come, remember me. Jesus did not reproach him, but Jesus said to him what? This day shall he be with me in paradise. This is our sister's consolation. This is your consolation and my consolation. Despite our faults, if we cry to God in a sincere heart, I guarantee you this, he can stamp our sins out. And once our sins are stamped out, the devil and all his whole entourage cannot stop us from ascending onto the Most High. Amen. But I pray, you know, I, I, anybody took up her cooking? I, it can't be David because you need bringing bread every morning in work. <laughs> so it can't be David. We sure that. And boiling the bread too. You understand? But you're going to remember her and the traits that she gave to you guys is something to cherish. And to lose, you know, sometimes we lose our, our father. All right, we hang around. But you see our mother? It's different. Because we'll still jump in our mommy's bed. Big man as we is, and she lie down, we go lie down with her. Boy, warm to your boy, move. You can't, you know why? The warmth of a mother is forever stained in our hearts that we are forever drawn to her. And at the end of the day, she's gone. And you guys will go home, go to the repast, do all that you have to do. But in your quiet moments, tears may flow from your eyes. But let it be tears 
in, in sadness in the sense that she's not here, but also in the tears of joy that she's resting. To the, big, to the bigger siblings, I know he's a big man, but you know he was there with your mother for a long time, and he's gonna be there. Remember him, I ask. He's gonna play big and brave, you know, and he's gonna say, yeah, everything cool. But you see this will break. It will break at the end of the day. And I ask, I just ask of you to remember him and as you do what you have to do. I don't believe anything, you know, when family dead, let me get together. All the time we make him back and all, mommy dead, I go get together now. Really? I ain't doing that. I remember my mother dead, my sister come downstairs, ah! You know, mommy, mommy dead, and I said, and what? My brother said, you could be crude. I said, but she's not speaking to me even when I left to go to church. She's spitting through the window. Now mommy dead, me family must get together. What did that have to do with your behavior? And I was just being real. And I tell people this, that if we can't live together while we are alive, I don't need an occasion to love you. End of story. I don't need an occasion to come into, come into my workplace and watch somebody say, my God, you're looking nice. I don't need an occasion to put a smile on somebody's face. No, I don't. It's what we do as human beings do it. Because the same way you will want love is the same way we ought to give back love to each other. And I want to believe that she did her part in giving love to the kids. And you see that part she talk about always her extra food? That is a whole tradition. I don't know if it's happened now. Home by me, I can't cook exact food, you know. Still, I can't cook exact food. Because somebody must pass. And you, it's, it's in our DNA. You have to eat. If you don't want it, look a box, carry it, carry it. And that's what she did. She ensured that everybody, so then the neighbors were always there with you guys. So when they were there, she made sure and do what? If all the kids were fed. That's motherhood. She did her part. She lived her life. She was Sel Duncan. Sel Duncan, all afraid to say it now? What happened? So what? She said drink? So what? Some of us are a bunch of hypocrites. You know, I'm so this, I'm so that. Really? Check we history. She enjoyed her life. That's the truth. And coming to her age, I'm seeing her, she got baptized. I've seen that she's a spiritual mother to, to people. So then she reached a degree in her life where she gave her life to God. So what if she did what? Some of us were hoes before we became to God. What's the problem? Really? What's your problem? I tell people, I gave a lecture one day and I told some young ministers, I said, don't look at me as a saint. They said, Bishop? I said, no, I've been in hotels with women. Bishop? I said, yes, I have. I said, don't look at me as no saint, but I'm telling you this, come open my closet that you have no acquisition against me. So she lived her life. Rona lived her life. She was what? She was from St. James. And all St. James people lived their life. Leave her alone. Now she's gone with our Lord. The best thing we can do is when in the night when we pray and we remember her, we say, Lord, be merciful unto her. That she too will find herself among the saints. You think when she go up there, she going up at Bacchanal? No, she had mellow out. She had enough time to mellow out. And a beautiful age of 92. A little bit again, pension with a gishy pension again. <laughs> and she lived her life. And now that she has gone, we bless God that she had not suffered. That dementia did not take over in full because I'm telling you, it would have been hard for every one of you guys. But God gave you a burden, and God placed a burden on my brother and my friend David. And he may not see it as that, but it's a divine burden. You were the last, and it is God's will that you take care and ensure that you held that matriarch that held a family together. And I, from my heart, I said you did an excellent job. You know, you did an excellent job. And now that she's gone, we give praise and thanks to God. So with these words, beloved, I want to do something here. I'm asking if the family member don't have objections, you can come. Is there any spiritual people inside the house here? In this place? Stand? Just stand. And don't be ashamed. I ain't going to bite nobody. Just come forward. Just come for me. I ain't gonna kill nobody, it's Lent.
round the cup, round the cup. Anything in your hand, take it out. If it's money, put it on top of here. Yeah, make your hands loose. Yes, sir.
Love it. You all could come view the body now, eh?
Hi, everybody, announcement. I know everybody's ready to leave, but there is some slight refreshments after this uh, downstairs, right? I think last night they, they had about 16 duck, the curry and it had roti and things, so we'll meet downstairs and have a good time. She used to drink, I think they are punching, but we drink that after the Easter.